I'm Ranger Rhonda, and normally I would be welcoming you to Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but today is just a little bit different. This is a video series where we'll be exploring natural spaces right where the Smokies park rangers, park staff, and park partners live. So I invite you to come enjoy an outdoor experience with us in this episode of Smokies at Home. Hello, my name is Luke Schutzman and I am one of the teacher naturalists at the Great Smoky Mountains Institute at Tremont. And today I want to talk to you about the American black bear. The black bear is synonymous with the Great Smoky Mountains and if you've been to any of the towns within 15 miles of the park, you'll know exactly what I mean. Those towns are covered in black bears on t-shirts, signs, cars, magnets, anything that they can sell. And there's good reason. The black bear is one of the most charismatic animals and has been since the start of the park. Okay, let's dive in on the American black bear. First thing, scientific name, Ursus americanus. Scientific names are Latin names that scientists across the world can use so that everyone knows you're talking about the same species. These animals, the North American black bear, there are over 600,000 of them, which makes them the most numerous bear species on the planet. They outnumber all the other bear species combined. With an increasing population, the American black bear represents a success story in the complicated struggle of humans coexisting with other animals on the planet, especially large predatory animals like the black bear. The success of the American black bear is rooted in their physical and behavioral adaptations that have helped them thrive across North America, as well as survive alongside humans as we expand our presence on the continent. Looking at the past, we can see that the ancestor of the American black bear moved across the Bering Land Bridge millions of years ago into North America and then spread across the continent. Today, their closest living relative is the Asian black bear very similar size bear that is also a tree climber, arboreal species, like the American black bear. Some distinguishing differences that you can see is they have this mane of fur around their neck and this white blaze across their chest, which often gives them the name moon bear. Uh, but the Asian black bear is the closest currently living relative to the North American black bear. As you can see, we're just going to put some paint on this guy and work around the face there. Now let's go in a little bit more on why those adaptations help the black bear to survive in North America. So, for the American black bear, their smaller size, their omnivore diet, and tree climbing ability has allowed them to live alongside larger predatory mammals, such as the short-faced bear, the North American lion, and Smilodon, the saber-toothed cats. Next, in this drawing, you're going to see a size comparison of those animals to the North American black bear. So we're going to work in the short-faced bear, which is one of the largest bear species we know of that has lived on the planet. And then the black bear that I draw on the same page with the short-faced bear is the one that is going to be to scale to that animal. You can see the black bear now. And then behind the black bear is going to be a saber-toothed cat. And then behind that cat is going to be the North American lion. These animals all shared the North American continent. And you can see that the North American lion was even larger than the saber-toothed cats. It was actually even larger than the African lions that we know of today. Now, being smaller helped the black bear to avoid competing with these animals for food and territory, although it still had to watch out for these animals who may try to prey upon it during this time. Their wide omnivore diet of berries, grasses, insects, nuts, fish, and meat helped the black bear to be more resilient when prey animals were hard to find. These, ant these black bears also favored dense forest environments 
where trees provide them with an escape from those larger predators. Today, this helps them to live alongside the grizzly or brown bear that share their range in parts of the western United States and Canada. As North America went through dramatic climate shifts, multiple ice ages, as well as increases in the number of humans on the continent, the black bear's adaptations helped them to weather these cha challenges better than many larger, more carnivorous mammals that went extinct, like our friends, the short-faced bear, the North American lion, and the saber-toothed cat. These large predators went extinct about 11,000 years ago, along with large animals like the woolly mammoth and other animals we associate with the Ice Age periods. Some of this was, we think, due to the drastic changes in the environment, and other evidence suggests that these animals were increasingly hunted by humans that had moved to these areas and the larger and larger human populations. So all those animals went extinct around the last ice age as the continent changed and some of the herbivores also went extinct. But our American black bear is still here today. Today, those traits help the black bear to be the most numerous, arguably most successful bear species on the planet today. Their small size, omnivore diet, and tendency to avoid confrontation with humans helps them to survive alongside us. On the human side, conservation efforts like the Endangered Species Act through the U.S. Congress, bear safety education, pushed forward through the National Park Service, and hunting managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife have helped black bears to the point where they are not only increasing in number, but also return returning to more of their former range. Changing attitudes in the American public has also done wonders for black bear populations, as well as changing our practices. Remember, that coexistence with black bears is successful through 50 feet of social distancing between us and them, proper food and trash storage, and please do not feed the bears. You can see on our illustration here, I'm going to add a black bear climbing up in a tree. Like we said, there are one of only three species of bear in the world that climb trees. I'm going to add a little foliage there. And then work a little bit longer on our black bear illustration down here at the bottom. Today for my nature journal, I've been using a variety of watercolors, sharpies, colored pencil, and markers. What is your favorite animal in the Smoky Mountains? Share your stories and art with Tremont Institute through our social media. Let's see, let's add a few of their diet onto our art. Ooh, looks like we have a lot of camera shake. I'm sorry about that. Add some fish, acorns. They'll often eat nuts during the fall when those nuts have come down from the tree. Berries during the summertime and grasses and plants during the springtime when they've just woken up here in the Great Smoky Mountains. And then meat and fish is a year-round thing when they can find it. Especially in the fall, they're gonna go through hyprophagia where they're eating as much food as possible to get rid of for that period of torpor or sleeping or hibernation that they're going through in the winter. Once again, I am Luke Schutzman, and on behalf of Tremont, the Discover Life in America, Great Smoky Mountains Association, Friends of the Smokies, and the National Park Service, I want to thank you for your time, and remember, you can experience the Great Smoky Mountains with us at smokies.org. That's S-M-O-K-I-E-E-E-S dot O-R-G. Thank you, everybody, and we will see you on the next video.